What is going on? My name is Diane. Really sunny outside. Let me get the sunglasses going. And this is Beyond the Gym, episode two. Today we got Jerry. How are you doing today, bud? I'm good, Shy. How are you, brother? Good, good. Uh, so where are we at on this beautiful sunny day? <laughs> so we're at uh, one of my buddy's coastal ranch locations uh, off the coast of uh, Santa Barbara area. Uh, he owns a pretty large acreage out here with a few ranges on site. Nice, and there's a lot of like weapons training that's done here and so, yeah, all we, that good stuff. We, we do quite a bit of uh, uh, firearms training, tactics training here, and uh, just have overall good time that's with good. the buddies. Yeah, it seems there's a lot of good energy out here. So uh, let's take it back to Metroflex. How are you associated to Metroflex? How long have you been a member? So I've been a member since the White Wall days, since 2011 when Eddie and uh, Chris first opened up the gym, uh, when they were co-partners with the gym. I've uh, been off and on going to Metroflex since then, so it's been what, nine years now? Wow. Nine years that I've been going to Metroflex and it's I got it. 2011, to, right? 2011, yeah. Right, yeah. 2011. And, uh, I, I got to tell you, it's been a roller coaster ride, but it's been amazing. Yeah. Did you ever expect to see uh, Metroflex grow the way it's grown? Uh, I thought it was more of a playground back in the day. Yeah. Uh, he I think was it's still a playground. It's no, still sure. an adult <laughs> playground. It definitely is, but it's grown into a very good business model now. Yeah. And uh, uh, between Eddie and everybody that have, have uh, helped build the gym. It's it's more than just a gym now. It's it's a life. It's a lifestyle. It's a home away from home. It's something that's that's helped me uh, immensely in my my professional and personal career. Okay, and which is also like why and how we are here right now because of like the community that's based out of there. The a bunch of like success stories that have come out there. You being one of them, Thank which you. is why we are physically sitting out here in this <laughs> range right now. How important is training associated to weapon training associated to actually carrying a firearm? You you have to be proficient with what you carry. I mean, I'll put it to you in in the gym aspect. Uh, are you going to get underneath a squat rack, 250, you know, 225 pounds, 315, you know, three wheels on each side? Um, never squat it in your life, but you're going to get under it and try to squat, you're probably not going to do well. No. You're probably going to tear something or, or mess something up. Um, so it goes back to the fundamentals of squatting. So how do you squat? Um, it's the same thing in, in firearms and the fundamentals is I have to kind of, the, 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 the saying we use to use in the Marine Corps is uh, a crawl, walk, uh, run. It's, it's basically the same thing, only I teach it a little bit differently. Um, this is based off of doctrine that I've learned from a training company named uh, Progressive Force Concepts. I use the method um, mechanics consistently done over time and then you can get aggressive with it. So I, I build a foundation of mechanics and then you consistently do it over time and then we can get nice and proficient with it. So uh, what is it that you do uh, today? Like so professionally, what I do now is uh, I work for a family in the private sector. I provide uh, security, uh, drive, I used to drive for them, uh, residential stuff, uh, advise. I also run the training and firearms program for the company. Okay. Um, but uh, prior to that, the segue to that was I was in law enforcement. I was in LAPD for 10 years. Okay. I did a lot of moonlighting on the side as well. Uh, and then prior to that, I was in the Marine Corps for four years from 2002 to 2006. Oh, wow. So all my adult life, I've been around and I've trained with firearms, more so over the last five years, more than anything. Okay, nice. And then uh, from your time to military to being a police officer, did you ever expect to be in the position that you're in right now to uh, not only be like, um, a spokesperson for weapons training and different things like that. But um, all in all, with your career, did you ever expect to be where you're at right now, currently? Um, I honestly thought that I was either A, uh, going to continue my service in the military, uh -huh. or I was just going to be a cop all my life, a B cop, just, you know, a street cop. And um, me working for a family in the private sector was just a true blessing. Uh, it had just opened up so many windows so many doors and opportunities for me to do what I truly am passionate about, and that's actually teaching people. It's not just so much handling the weapons that I love, but it's actually sitting there explaining the small nuances to people and then throwing them out there and going, do it now. Yeah, and, then, and then seeing the light bulb 
pop up and go, ah, they got it now. Yeah. I just love that. I'm, I'm passionate about that. It's a great feeling. It is. And you're also incorporating that kind of training and work ethic to your son, which I've seen, you know, you teach him how to handle a weapon properly and all that. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, without going into full detail. Um, so my, my son is... Uh, I, I'm pretty much his hero <laughs> and he, lo he looks up to me for a lot of the stuff a lot of the things that he does he kind of mimics what I do um, I've been teaching my son has been around firearms all his life um, mm -hmm. I've been around firearms all my adult life and I'm teaching him how to respect um, not only uh, the weapon and the tools themselves but to respect authority and to respect instructions when I give him instructions it's He's listening very well, and you can see him thinking about the instructions I'm giving him, and then he actually performs. And to me, that's a good segue into anything we do in, in life. That right. goes into, that could be as easy as the teacher at school telling him, giving him instructions on how to perform a task, and he listens, and then he processes it, and then he does it. So to me, it's almost the same evidence. It's almost yeah. the same aspect. The other thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I, I truly believe that if you teach somebody to respect certain things, certain tools, certain um, professions, certain skills, that they're not going to abuse those those items. So for me, teaching them proper weapons handling and safety is going to be, I mean, I see him handling weapons better than some adults. Yeah, yeah. Let's put it that way. I think there's like a sense of like respect going forward to anything that he approaches built with this kind of knowledge you're teaching him at the young age. And I think that's very powerful. And I think that's awesome that but you're doing that as well because we were talking about it on the car ride over here. There's a lack of understanding of how tools work. Correct. You know, and you teach them that foundation right away. It's not teaching someone a weaponry, you're just teaching them those life skills you Correct. Know, to go forward. And I think that's uh, reflects within you as a person as well as like a respectful person within our society. Sure, I appreciate cool. it. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. And then uh, ultimately too, he, he likes to have fun with it. It's yeah. we're building memories, we're building moments. He looks forward to hanging out with me, to going out uh, either outdoors, indoors, or just being around me. And that for me, that's that's big. I didn't have. My father was there, but he was always working. Mm -hmm. So for me to be around my son and be able to, to spend time with him and do something that we both enjoy, mm -hmm. he's, he's going to remember this for the rest of his life. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it was great talking to you today. And, uh, you know, if y'all ever seen uh, Jerry at the gym, don't be shy. Come say hi. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, 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 a, I'm a teddy bear, man. You, you, you got to trust that mustache, <laughs> you know. But, uh, Jerry, it's been a pleasure. Shy, pleasure's and all you mine. Could find, um, you can find you on Instagram, Jerry. P PDK. PDK. Yeah. All right, find him on Instagram. Thank you guys for watching. And this concludes uh, Beyond the Gym episode two. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah.